Hi 108, this is week six and we are working on unit 14, which is traveling through minor. So to review minor, with minor scales in 108, we do not do full fingerings. We're gonna do them in a tetrachord fashion. I hope that if you get a chance to study applied piano uh, 151 after this course, you will probably do full minor scales with correct fingerings there. But for the time of our class period and with the fact that minor scales are not a part of your proficiency, we're gonna learn them in a simpler form with pitch and with the three varieties, but not having to learn all the different fingerings. So I've put on my board here, our tonic whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole formula for a minor scale. So you see where the spots are where it's flipped from major giving us those different uh, different half and whole steps. I've bracketed four and four, and that's the easiest way to do it. So I used to like to start with my fourth finger on my left hand, tonic, whole, half, whole, and then I bring my thumb in in my right hand, whole, half, whole, whole, and then just go up and down. Again, the fingerings are wonderful, but as we get into some of the more complicated keys, we have varieties of fingerings for harmonic, for natural, for melodic, and it gets to be a lot of fingerings at this point to learn when our main goal is working towards exactly the material that's on the proficiency. Minor sight reading, minor repertoire, minor transposition can be on the proficiency, and so that's why we need to get comfortable with reading and playing in minor. So let's use, for example, A minor. If I'm doing an A minor scale with A, B, my tonic, I'm gonna take my left hand, I'm gonna start with finger four. This is not a set fingering though. If you find you prefer lining it up this way or this way, all good. But four and four seems to be a nice way to divide it. So tonic, whole, half, there's that lowered third, whole, whole, half, whole, and then just simply going back down. So those are called, this is called a tetrachord fashion. That's how we'll be playing those. So you need to be familiar with all three forms that minor comes in. Following that tonic whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole pattern gives me natural minor or following the key signature. If I am doing a piece that's based in harmonic minor, or I'm being asked to play harmonic minor scale, I'm gonna raise the seventh. So if I go back to my A minor, I've got my pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. G would be that seventh scale degree. I'm gonna raise it half a step, both ascending and descending. You can hear the different tonal quality with harmonic minor. With that raised leading tone, you're gonna find that that gives us a major five or major five seven chord and that's quite common in minor is to find that harmonic is the pattern that's being used. Our third type, melodic minor, is raising six and seven, but notice that it's only ascending. So again, back to my A minor, one, two, three, four, five, raise six, raise seven, but then descending, I go right back down to my natural minor. So I encourage you to go through all 12 keys. If I did C minor, tonic, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. There would be my natural. Harmonic, I'm gonna raise that seventh. Melodic, I'm gonna raise six and seven. examples for you. Once you've got your, your natural harmonic melodic scales going, now it's time to add arpeggios in. For arpeggios, you are required to know two octaves hands together with traditional fingerings for the proficiency. So you don't get the, the lighter version of this. This is the full. Here's the difference. When we did major arpeggios, we had different fingerings for white to white and white to black. Remember that the right hand did stay the same, but the left hand was different. We had five, four for a white to white. We had five, three for a white to black. So we talked about perhaps remembering that with that black key being higher, I needed the longer finger. With minor, 
white to white and white to black both use 5-4. The reason is with that dropped third, that lower third, is anatomically more in line with my fourth finger than with my third. So just one set of fingerings here works for white to white or white to black. So if I was doing A minor arpeggio, that we just did the A minor scales, notice my left hand is five, four, two. The other minor scale that we just did a few minutes ago was C minor. So now I have a white to black but notice it is still 5-4. Remember that trick I said of remembering that we aren't ever gonna choose these together, so be sure that you're not tempted to go there. 5-4. Black to white stays with the exact same fingering that we had for major, so if I was doing A-flat minor, it would still be that fingering of one, twos, and fours with thumbs on those white keys. So the main thing that I'd like you doing this week is memorizing your minor scale if you're not familiar with the pattern, memorizing how those three types of minor scales change, and get comfortable with it in this divided hand setup. Then I'd like you to make sure that you get your arpeggios in there, memorizing the slight tweak that there is to fingerings, and doing two octaves hands together on them. As far as the material in Unit 14, most of it is this technique of minor scales and minor arpeggios. So there isn't a whole lot that I'd like you to look at, but I would like you to point out page 191. So you've got a, a nice little piece here, a little fantasy study. So remember when you're looking at a piece of repertoire or sight reading or transposition, major and minor are both fair game on the proficiency. So you need to make sure that you look carefully at your key signature and make sure you know if it's in major or minor. So remember to review that little fantasy study here. No flats or sharps would put me in the major key of C. Your minor key is the sixth scale degree of that major. So perhaps you may have grown up thinking of it as the sixth scale degree, this would be A minor. You also could think of it as it's three half steps down from that major, one, two, three. So either way, thinking six scale degree is my minor tonic, or down three half steps is my minor tonic, gives you A minor. C major, A minor, how to figure out which one it's in? The absolute best place for you to look is the end, because your pieces are always going to end on tonic. And I can see this piece is ending on an A, and that is telling me that I would set this piece up in the key of A minor. We will spend some time with this one in class looking at how that minor one chord looks different, how our five seven is gonna function, how the middle is moving, and how to set that up, and, and some sight reading strategies on this. I'd also like you to take a look at pages 192 and 193. Here are four short sight reading pieces that you can do. They are all in minor. So again, figure out your major key signature first, and then you can either think six scale degree or down three half steps to find out what the minor is. Since this unit's in minor, you can pretty much guess they're all in minor. But check the end just to get used to looking for that confirmation of if it's a major or minor. You've got lots of different keys here, articulations, different types of texture. Remember that your quiz for this week, due by Friday at 5 p.m., is your choice of any one of these four sight reading. So pick which one is your favorite. I want to hear your scale with the split hands, all three forms, and the minor arpeggio in the key of whichever example here you have chosen. So have fun with minor this week.